Okay, this is Ralph Zaransky. I'm on the phone with Kevin Hurley. Kevin is the world's foremost hypnotist and also is recognized as one of the funniest of all the hypnotists in the world today. He has wowed audience from one side of the planet to the other and has basically been on the stage with some of the most important people. Kevin, how are you doing today? Ralph, I'm doing fine. How are you? I'm doing good. Would you be able to tell us a little bit about your career and what you do? Absolutely. You know, I've been in uh, show business and entertaining, making people happy since I was 10 years old. And I started out as a magician and a sleight of hand artist and an illusionist. And then eventually I moved over uh, into hypnosis. And I've been so fortunate to train with uh, some of the best hypnotists around the world. And I really believe in doing my own material. So I took what I learned and developed uh, a 90-minute stage show that's taken me all over the world. That's really amazing. Uh, one of my friends, Robert Channing, who is the world's foremost uh, mind reader. I did a Heroes interview on Robert, and he was how I was able to get connected with you. And I was just amazed at uh, just how incredible you are and how you can transform people's lives in such a short period of time just by working with their mind. How do you do the hypnosis thing? Well, you know, hypnosis is based on a psychological principle called suggestion. And basically, you know, we're walking around, you, Ralph, myself, everybody listening to us is walking around with the most powerful computer in the world inside of them right now. And scientists are always arguing that we use somewhere from 7 to 14 percent of our brain. So that's all that we're tapping into right now. And I really think, feel through exercising and hypnosis, we could use a little bit more. So it is, it's called pyramiding. Somebody goes into hypnosis by a progression, by listening to my suggestions, uh, by trusting me, and then they just go deeper and deeper. So I do a combination of things. Obviously, uh, I make people all over the world happy by watching this stage show. It's a comedy stage show. I come out, I do some stand-up comedy. I get some people out of the audience, uh, 15 to 20, sometimes 30, 40, depending on the size of the stage, hypnotize them, and I make them them do extraordinary things. Now they're happy after the show because I just made them the stars of the evening. They're going to be so popular in their communities, the talk of the town for, for weeks to come. Made the audience happy because I made them forget about their problems for 90 minutes and all they were worried about is what, what outrageous thing is going to happen next. So I did that for a while and then I found out, you know, people kept asking me afterwards, Kevin, can you help me stop smoking? Can you help me lose weight? I am so stressed out. I'm afraid of flying. I grind my teeth. I bite my nails and so on and so on. And I kept a notebook of all these requests from all over North America and all over the world and now we're actually developing products audio cds and entire programs of self-help to utilize the hypnosis to use progressive relaxation in the comfort of your own home and accomplish these goals while you're completely relaxed or sleeping well you know that's pretty amazing i know that you've met a lot of really important people and a lot of individuals that us would consider as heroes what is your definition of heroism my definition of heroism is uh, on so many levels, but, you know, I don't think you have to uh, be in the Wall Street Journal or, or make headlines to be a hero. A hero is somebody that claps their hands and when their feet hit the floor out of the bed in the morning, they just want to make a difference. You know, somebody, uh, an old wise hippie told me, the definition of an intellectual is somebody that gets up and thirsts for knowledge every day. And um, I just think a hero is somebody who can go out in their community and make a difference. And I don't think it should be measured by, uh, you know, uh, money and publicity. It's about, uh, obviously, how many lives that you can touch. Did you ever create a secret hero in your mind that helped you deal with life's difficulties? A secret hero in my mind. You know, to be honest with you, I have an extreme schedule. I perform over 300 stage shows a year mm. all over the country. So you wow. can imagine, I'm in buses, I'm in cars, I'm in airplanes, I'm meeting different people, uh, constantly traveling, and uh, it's stressful. It's tough to manage a uh, family life with a really uh, strong career. And um, here's just a little funny thing. One of my heroes is, is Rocky from, you know, Sylvester Stallone movies. <laughs> and, um, every time I can't get out of bed, I always think of Burgess Meredith when he's down a, a, on the mat with Rocky. And he says, Rocky, get up, you son of a bitch, because Mickey loves you. Mm -hmm. So there's just the little hero. Mm -hmm. So what are the qualities and attributes of that uh, particular heroic character that you think are beneficial for others to emulate? Well, I think anybody uh, can be a leader or a hero when the going is easy. When everybody's going yeah. with you, when there's no turmoil, hey, that's easy to lead. Uh, you know, the ultimate captain, the ultimate hero, the ultimate leader is somebody that can lead through uh, diversity or when things are going wrong. So uh, when it gets intense, that's that's what I think about. You know, you got to finish it to the end. And really, what I found is anything worthwhile is uh, worth working out hard. I mean, you know, something amazing is it going to be accomplished in in a day or a week or a lot of times even in a year. I really feel like uh, what I'm doing with the hypnosis and the entertaining and stuff, I'll never finish it. It's going to be a lifelong quest. What is your perspective on goodness, ethics, and moral behavior? 
gosh, you know, uh, again, with all the traveling and working and coming in contact with so many people, um, you really have to have a keen sense. And uh, that's what I look for uh, most when I do business with somebody or um, even have a personal relationship with somebody. Uh, it's of the utmost importance. And there's so many people out there that I could deal with. I'm going for somebody that I trust uh, implicitly. Mm -hmm. What principles are you willing to sacrifice your life for? What principles am I willing to sacrifice my life for? Hmm. Obviously, um, freedom's uh, an important thing. I think that's why, uh, you know, I'm a United States citizen. I, I love this country. I wouldn't live anywhere else at any other time. And uh, the ability to, to enterprise, the ability to see. And I took something that I loved. I took something that everybody made fun of me for. That nobody thought that I could do. And uh, I've become one of the best at it. And uh, that's my favorite thing about America. What, are the, what was the lowest point in your life, and how did you change your life path to win a victory over all obstacles? The lowest point in my life would probably be, um, geez, about six or seven years ago when I really decided to focus on this uh, full time. And it's an incredible challenge to, to build a business or to build anything up uh, from the ground. So uh, obviously, you know, financial burdens are a difficulty for many people. And, um, you know, that, that would encompass, and uh, you know, just having the faith, just thinking of the Rocky movies, that they keep going, and they keep going, and there's going to be light at the end of the tunnel. So, you know, that would be my best advice. If you believe in something, lock on to it and uh, don't let go. Do you have a dream or vision that sets the course of your life? Yeah, greatness. Uh, really, it just to touch as many people as I can. You know, I've been saying through this interview, and I just did one for College Power Performers Radio, uh, it's just uh, touching people individually. It, it means so much to me uh, when somebody comes up and says thank you. Thank you for making my son or daughter, you know, they were obese, and uh, you brought them up on stage, and you made them the star of the show. They weren't popular for two years in the school. Now they're the talk of the town. Thank you for helping me lose 50 pounds. I was a, a slave to cigarettes for, for 25 years. I listened to your CD for a month. I was able to throw them down. I think the thank yous is uh, what I'm going for. Do you take a positive vision, uh, vision and positive view of setbacks, misfortunes, and mistakes? Yeah, it's funny, you know, uh, especially doing what I do, hypnosis. It's really cutting edge. It's uh, We're still learning stuff. It's still not uh, exactly mainstream. I really believe it's going to become that. I just heard this guy, Don Martin, say, uh, you know, he put out a program that I was just learning some techniques from. And he said, boy, if I put out a program on techniques that didn't work, uh, it would, there would be 500 DVDs. <laughs> That's true. So I think it's like the Edison thing, uh, creating the light bulb. Uh, and actually, you know, I used to get frustrated constantly at the beginning of my career when something wouldn't work, something wouldn't work. Now, to tell you the truth, Ralph, I get excited by it because that just means that you're one step closer to the right answer are you an optimist i try to be i'm a realist though too i like to look at things uh you know always always positively but you know uh let's face it uh, you got to deal with reality and sometimes uh things how they are and you can't always have what you want but you can get as close to it as possible do you have the courage to pursue new ideas absolutely why are you willing to experience discomfort in the pursuit of your dream? I guess, you know, that comes down to faith. And, again, uh, I can't um, – the reason I'm a performer, the reason I travel mm -hmm. make people happy and help them and hypnotize them is because I can't see myself uh, doing anything else, uh, really. It's uh, – sometimes I feel like it's almost a calling, not in a religious aspect, but um, I, was, I was meant to do what I do, and I believe in that. And there's just no other option. It's either this or nothing. How important was it to believe in your dreams that they'd eventually become reality? It's very important. And what people have to understand is, uh, you know, in, in today's society, it's very competitive. And a lot of people will lead you to believe that they're encouraging your success. And then all of a sudden, when you become successful, you're going to experience jealousy. And that really roots out um, who are your real fans and your, your friends and family and the real believers in you and uh, who's not. So, again, I... Believing in, in what you're doing is, for me, 100%. Then everything else will just fall in place. And you got to be willing to put the time into it. you got to understand that it just doesn't happen overnight. Everybody has doubts and fears. How are you able to overcome your doubts and fears? Well, you know, I, I actually utilize hypnosis. Um, I have a fear of flying. 
and I have to fly, uh, you know, from 100 to 200 times uh, a year, really. Uh, I'm, I'm really tall, and it's, it's crampy, and uh, I have sensitive ears. I use progressive relaxation uh, to do that, which is something on my audio uh, CDs that I teach people how to do. So I, I just use a lot of meditation and a lot of belief. I mean, it's a natural, it's a natural instinct to be uh, afraid of something. And again, though, it seems to me that a lot of people are afraid of things that they just don't understand. A lot of people are afraid of hypnosis. A lot of people even think think that hypnosis is in some sense mind control or demonic and then after they see the show and they see how powerful and how positive it is it completely changes their mind so i think it's just important for people to be educated on uh, what they're making an opinion about who helped give you the willpower to change things in your life for the better you know uh, a strong faith and a, and a strong community uh, for sure i grew up in uh, in the city of pittsburgh in a small um, you know i was raised irish catholic in, a, in an italian neighborhood uh, with a really strong sense of uh, community and honor and uh, and discipline so um, I guess it all stems from that how important is it to forgive those who upset offend and oppose you uh, you know uh, that that would be a tough position for me Ralph to sit here and pass uh, judgment every scenario is, uh, is is different you know there's been some people uh, that have done things that um, are completely out of line and again you know you asked the question earlier about how important ethics and morals are of somebody I work with 100 percent but as far as forgiveness goes, um, I don't hate anybody or anything. In fact, I found, uh, you know, the anger and, and hatred uh, to anybody is just a useless emotion. It really, it really ties up your mind, your body, your spirit. Um, so, you know, forgiving is one thing. Uh, forgetting, I guess it depends on what happened. Do you experience service to others as a source of joy? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I do a lot of charity work for uh, animal friends and um, some high school organizations and actually... I'm a, I'm a board member of something called DECA, Distributive Education Clubs of America, and it's something that I was in as a student, and I really think it, it gave me the confidence in the business world uh, because, you know, I'm in show business. There's the show, which I'm really good at, and there's the business, and, uh, you know, I'm a little bit business savvy, but I have a lot of agents and representation that help me. And this organization, DECA, is all about training young kids to become the next business leaders for the future, almost like FBLA, so uh, I give uh, a lot of my time and efforts to that because it's something I really believe in the next generation being schooled uh, in the way it should be. What place does the power of prayer have in your life? The power of prayer, you know, um, it's, it's, it's important. It's important uh, constantly, um, at, you know, searching within myself for the power and the wisdom and others to, to continue. How important is it to maintain a sense of humor in the face of serious problems? Again, um, you know, uh, I think people have coined me as uh, America's funniest hypnotist. And, uh, you know, obviously, uh, I, you know, I have, a, I have a huge sense of humor. In fact, that's that's one of my ways I deal with things. And to be honest with you, sometimes that offends people. But that's the way that I cope with things, uh, with humor. So if that's your personality, uh, it makes it a lot easier. Who are the heroes in your life? You know, I, I, my mother would definitely be one. Here's a lady that's uh, lived in the same community her whole life and just really believes in the system, really believes in America, really believes in the community and doesn't want anything other than, uh, you know, her health to get up and go to work. She works for uh, a bank downtown and uh, she's there every day. So that would be a hero. Let's see, uh, David Copperfield, who's a, a famous delusionist, is a hero of mine because he's pushed the envelope harder than anybody. This guy's been in show business for 25 years. He still does 500 shows uh, um, a year. So what does that say to me that says it's not all about the money. It's about love and passion and uh, making people happy. And then, um, you know, I've received a lot of help uh, on the way up from people like Zig Ziglar and Tony Robbins. How did they make a positive difference in your life? Well, you know, uh, each one in a different way. Obviously, uh, inter entertainers, there's been some stand-up comedians, even like Richard Pryor, George Carlin and stuff, that have just, you know, to see what they do, to see their greatness, their awesomeness, have really inspired me to, to go forward. People like Tony Robbins and Zig Ziglar have inspired me to use what I have, you know. That's the thing. Everybody's different. you got to play, as they say in the business, uh, you got to play to the room. you got to know who you're in front of. So really, I think it's about taking what you believe in, taking your natural abilities and talents, and really magnifying them to to help others. And then again, uh, my mother just uh, for supporting me through everything and, uh, you know, coming from a broken household again. Just a woman that uh, lives by the system, wants to get up, have her health so she can go to work and take care of business. To me, uh, you know, that's, that's a hero.
Who do you feel are the real heroes in our society today that aren't getting the recognition that they deserve? You know, I think you go to any community, uh, especially in America, and uh, find uh, heroes, you know, uh, volunteers. I'd like to see uh, some more people that volunteer for literacy uh, shown. It really is um, one of my favorite things to do, and it's almost a, a sarcastic or a cynical thing when I go to a town is to watch their local news. And, uh, you know, uh, I just see crappy production value and uh, scare tactics. It seems like... Um, that's what gets ratings now in the media. We got to scare them. We got to show some negativity. Somebody got shot. Something's going wrong. This or that. I mean, would it really kill them to do uh, five minutes a day on uh, what's positive happening? Yeah. Well, you know, that's why I created the Heroes Program because you, know, you have to counter if it bleeds, it leads uh, philosophy in the media, and the only way you can do that is a grassroots level like the Heroes Program. Why are heroes so important in the lives of young people? That's your most impressionable time. I find myself wishing I would learn how to speak more languages. That's one of the things that fascinates me, speaking language. If I would have learned that by the time I was 12, put two or three under my belt, it would have been a lot easier. So, you know, it's a very, I always keep that in mind, too, uh, when I do my charity work, or I still sometimes uh, go in and work with the younger kids in schools. It's a very impressionable time. So what kids pick up, I would say, between, you know, kindergarten and the time they get out of high school are really the things that are going to stick with them the rest of their life. So, obviously, negativity is going to breed negativity, and if we could get this out, positivity. It's going to breed positivity. How can anyone become a hero? You know, I would say uh, take everything that I just said. Take what you believe in. Find out what your strengths are. Because is it really worth doing if you don't believe in it? If you're just after something uh, about the money, that's not going to happen. There's a lot of people that are, you know, even successful financially that I really don't think are happy. To me, money is just evidence of uh, that you're good at what you do. So find your inner strengths. Find out what you're good at. Find out what you like. And then make a difference in your community. Is it that bad to help people? You know, and I really find it interesting, statistically speaking, that people that have less are across the board always willing to give more to charity because they understand that there's other people that have even less than they do. Well, you know, that's true. I just saw a report on the people that gave the greatest amount to charity, and they were the people in the middle income range. The people that are up in the millions of dollars uh, gave just a small fraction of what they earned, and you seem to think that maybe they're in a position where the love of money is the thing that drives their lives. Where do you think heroes are located? I came to the conclusion that they are everywhere, and most importantly, they are in the lives of the people and the families, like the grandmas, the grandpas, the teachers, the coaches. What do you feel about that? I feel that they're everywhere, too, Ralph. Uh, I, I, I've met uh, so many of them. You know, I keep a photo journal and I take uh, pictures of uh, what I meet. My life consists of flying into a town and getting picked up by complete strangers, and I'm only there for a day. So no matter how good it is or how bad it is, I'm there for about 24 hours, and I get to have a meal before we go to the theater and I do the show. And uh, I find uh, the majority of the time people are good. And they're completely touching, and, and everybody's a, a hero on a, on a different level. But, you know, you got to give back, uh, especially if you are successful, especially if you have had a good life. Uh, a good friend of mine, Rick Abrams, is a really successful financial investor, and, you know, he's made millions. And now he's constantly raising money to uh, for rehabilitation programs and for really positive things in the community. And they say, Rick, you know, you can do anything you want. You can be in the islands. You can be on vacation. Why are you doing this? And he goes, you know, I had a good life. If I don't give back, uh, I could get struck by lightning at any point. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kevin, how does it feel to be recognized as a hero? Uh, I'm honored. I'm honored. And, um, you know, really, and I hope I can continue to just uh, make people happy. And, um, you know, really, I can't thank people enough that have supported me over the years through all this and uh, the true fans and the people that keep in touch. And uh, it's a beautiful thing. And really, after all the traveling, uh, there's something fantastic going on uh, all over North America, all over the world in small communities. And, uh, Ralph, you know, I really hope this program helps uh, put a magnifying glass on that. Well, I hope so, too. I've been working on it for almost 12 years to try and counter the bad press and the fear tactics that the media uses. And uh, by doing a grassroots level like this, I think that we can all work together to make the world a better place. What are the things that you're doing to make the world a better place? Well, you know, uh, spreading uh, one of my big... Um biggest, biggest, uh, you know, people that I look up to would be Frank Sinatra. And again, for that reason, that he could go into a town or a theater or community and just make people forget about their problems for the hour or the two hours that he was on stage. 
singing his song. So, uh, you know, I'm just trying to spread uh, goodwill and cheer and uh, educate people on there's uh, alternatives if you need help. If you need, you know, if you feel overweight, if you're not self-confident, if you have nervous habits, if you have smoking, I'm really trying to use, um, you know, my name, my image to just make it better for people. And uh, the bigger I get, the more I'm going to give back. Kevin, do you have any good solutions to the problems facing society, especially racism, child and spousal abuse, and violence among young people? Uh, you know, I think uh, when you see the media and you talk to people, everybody blames the kids, the kids, the kids. Well, you know, where do the kids come from? The parents, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I really think, you know, and not being a parent myself, I hope I don't find out a line this way, but uh, I really think, um, you know, bad parenting leads to bad adolescents and, and, and bad children. So, um, we'll Give me the question one more time, Ralph. Okay. Um, do you have any really good solutions facing the problems in society, especially racism, child and spousal abuse, and violence among young people? You know, I love, I'm love. i a big fan of this movie, Big Fish. And uh, the guy says in Big Fish, he goes, uh, most people are scared of things that they don't understand. And they don't, you know, they just lack the social skills. And I think that is so true. Most people are just afraid of the things that they don't understand. As far as racism for myself, I was educated in a private school and a public school, and uh, which I could see advantages and disadvantages uh, to both. But, um, you know, there's a real problem in some of these um, guarded communities with uh, exposure to different cultures and uh, ethnocentrism and I would like to see that uh, gone. A person is a person, a culture is a culture. Hanukkah, Christmas, Kwanzaa, uh, Dalai Lama, whatever you want to do, uh, you know, people should be educated. I was just in a school yesterday, it was a complete private school, and they were wonderful academically, but I saw a real lack of culture there. And uh, I, you know, I think that's really in part, uh, important part of the education process, not just reading, writing, and arithmetic, but learning how to deal with other people. And unfortunately, it seems to me that a lot of kids don't get that until they get to a college or a university. Yeah, and boy, that's so true. Well, if you had three wishes for your life in the world that would instantly come true, what would they be? Um, I guess uh, success, peace, and prosperity. Yeah, those are good ones. And what do you think about the In Search of Heroes program and its impact on youth, parents, and business people? I think you're doing a wonderful job, like I said, Ralph. And, uh, you know, I hope everybody is listening up, and uh, I hope it's inspiring you to become a hero. And, again, you know, you don't have to go out and make a million dollars. You don't have to be on TV. Uh, you could go to the local food bank and help put some stuff together for the holidays. Uh, I'll be down at the Salvation Army Christmas Day serving, serving up some stuffing. Oh, that's great. Well, I know that you're not a parent yet, but what do you think the things parents can do that will help their children realize that they, too, can be heroes and make a positive impact on the lives of others? I think parents got to realize that uh, the, the globe is becoming more and more diverse. This is the United States of America, and it's not all one religion, and it's not all one race. And to have their kids, you know, you could raise, obviously, if you're of one faith or of one essence, you know, ethnic background, you're going to raise your kids like that. But, you know, uh, for me being a parent, if I'm ever lucky enough uh, to be married and to, and to do that, um, I just want them to understand that uh, there's good people and there's bad people, and that's that. It doesn't matter where you're from, what you look like, what you believe in. A good person, you know, you either have moral ethics from the way you were raised or you don't. Yeah, boy, that's so true. Well, Kevin, I know you're a busy person with over 300 uh, dates uh, a year. That's pretty amazing. That's a lot of traveling. I know that Robert Channing does a lot of those also, and it's just a heavy strain on his family. And, uh, you know, I just really admire you and how many people's lives that you're changing by helping them understand the power that's resident within their own minds. Do you have one parting thought that you'd like to leave with uh, the people listening to this interview? Believe. If you can dream it, you can have have it, you can become it. You just got to be patient. You just got to persevere. And isn't that really what a hero is? You just lock onto it and you don't let go until you accomplish it. Boy, that's so through. So, Kevin, I really appreciate your time and uh, thanks again. And uh, good luck on all of your uh, uh, gigs that you're doing. I mean, that's astounding. Are you going to continue that, that uh, level of going out that often um, for the next couple of years? Yeah, I'm going to do it as long as I can, and, um, you know, uh, we're going to see what happens. But my products are becoming more and more popular, and I'm spending more and more time developing programs uh, to help people off the stage. But i got to be honest, Ralph, you know, I didn't get into this uh, for the money or any other reason other than I love uh, what I do. And um, I don't think it's uh, going to be possible for me to be able to put it down. It just wouldn't be me. I have to do this.
Oh, that's great. Well, thanks again, Kevin. I really appreciate your time. Thanks, Ralph. <laughs> 